Welcome to Digital Asset News, like the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got bad news for XRP and worse news for XRP. So which one do you want first? Let's start with the bad news. So the bad news is that uh, crypto token XRP fell as much as 31% after Coinbase says it will stop trading it. And then, of course, it also fell much farther, or a little bit farther, uh, when Crypto.com announced that they're going to be delisting it. Uh, so let's break this down real quick. So what do we got? Well, this was actually from yesterday. I know it says December 29th, but that can't be right because I heard about this yesterday. And really what it just says is exactly what it states. Coinbase said it would suspend trading of XRP by mid-January. And this is all because of the SEC. They do not want to get caught with their pants down and be selling securities, even though I thought that they could sell securities on Coinbase, but <laughs> looks like they didn't want to play around with it. And they're like, you know what? Just get out of here. Figure it out, get sorted, and then come back and we'll help you out as much as we can. But uh, remember, Coinbase is just a company and uh, it's all about the bottom line. That's just how it is. I mean, let's let's not get emotional about it. That's just how it goes. So XRP was down 28% on the day and it went to about 20 cents. And I think I remember not too long ago it was at 65 cents. So uh, yeah, quite a bit of a dip right there. So that is Coinbase, what they're doing. And then uh, just today or late last night, I forgot when it was, uh, crypto.com also announced, hey, we're going to delist it. So some people say, you know, ah, well, they're just going to stop trading. They're not going to delisting. Well, crypto.com is like, no, we're delisting this and we're not going to deal with it until everything gets sorted. But the interesting thing about this is this, of course, is only in the United States. Uh, this does this has nothing to do if if you are in the uh, EU or Australia or any other type of uh, continent or country outside the U.S. You can still whatever you, whatever you want with XRP. You can still buy it, sell it, trade it, hold it, whatever you want. But in the U.S., they're not going to allow that. And really, it comes down to like the mid-January. And I keep seeing this date, 19th of January. I don't know why exactly that date is, but that's what uh, a lot of the exchanges are picking. But just so everybody knows that uh, even U.S. customers, you this will have no impact on withdrawals. I, You can still withdraw as much or withdraw as much uh, XRP as you want to whenever you want to. I'm sure they'll probably pick a date uh, to totally stop that, but that's what's going on right now. So here's the ex ex official statement. Effective January 19th at 10 a.m. UTC, XRP will be delisted and trading suspended from the Crypto.com app in the U.S. So this is going to be interesting because uh, in the beginning of December, Brad Garlinghouse went on uh, CNN or CNBC, one of those shows, and he said, hey, look, it doesn't matter uh, what anything really happens in the U.S. because 95% of Ripple's customers are not from the U.S. So it's not going to affect us one way or the other. And we're and they were talking about, you know, leaving the U.S. to go uh, somewhere else because they're like, you know, we don't need this place. And I don't know why they haven't gone yet because they're still here. And I'm not saying that they should leave or they shouldn't leave. I'm just saying it's interesting. They're like, hey, we're, we're going to leave, but they're still here. And then on top of that, so Brad is saying this, like, look, 9% of our customers are not from the U.S. So once this happened, once all these announcements happened, you saw it go from like around 50 cents to 33 cents. Today, it is December 29th. It is 10 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And uh, we're looking at around 21 cents. And I've seen it down as low as tw uh, 19 cents. So I know that, yes, you know, these customers aren't in the U.S., so it really shouldn't affect them too much. But yeah, here we are. So this leads me to my next point. And I want to talk to you face to face and tell you exactly what I'm doing. So let's jump in the Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the office. So interesting times right now, right? So let me just start off with this. I'm selling. I'm selling my XRP. And uh, I will have you know that uh, I've actually had XRP since 2017. And uh, I bought it at uh, 75 cents. I bought it at $1.25. I bought it at $2. I bought it at $2.85. I think that was the highest I ever did, $2.85. So uh, I have massive, massive losses if I sell. And that's okay. And I'm going to tell you why it's okay. So let me back up. Um, I know a lot of people in the XRP army, they think, hey, this is great news because uh, now we can get this out the way and we can, you know, finally we can have to determine that, that we are not a security. And I'm like, sure. But uh, really, what it really comes down to is this, uh, if you've ever been sued as a business, uh, like I have, you know how difficult it is to get back into the market and regain the trust of your customers. So Right now, Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse, they were chipping away at the banks going, look, I know you guys are innovators, but with XRP, we can do a lot of things with on-demand liquidity. Uh, we can do it cheaper, faster, stronger, all that stuff. 
And they're like, yeah, sure, uh, as long as it's not a security, we'll wait until uh, we have clearance by the SEC. Well, now they're getting that. And it looks like they're going the opposite route. And then people will also say, well, you know, there's a, there's a new chairman coming in, uh, the new head, and uh, he's, you know, af after Clayton is out. So this is going to be great. Sure. Uh, but in all honesty, I don't think it, it really is. And uh, the thing about banks also is that they're not innovators. So when this happens and they're like, oh, well, we don't really know. If they were such innovators, they probably would have gotten off of Swift in the 70s or the 80s or the 90s or 2000, 2010, take your pick, right? They're not really slow to action. That's really how it is. So all the progress that uh, Ripple and XRP have done uh, is going, hey, this is really going to do well. They pretty much just lost it. And it's going to be a long time for them to get it back. So to me, it makes no real sense to hold uh, XRP any longer. And uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to sell for tax reasons. Now, why am I doing this? Well, uh, like I talked about, I'm going to incur heavy losses. But the thing about me as a business owner is I got some heavy taxes. And that's really how it is. I never, ever, I can't remember the last time I've actually gotten a tax return. And that's really what it comes down to. I'm always paying uh, because of all the different businesses. So I need tax losses. And uh, this is what we call as far as tax loss harvesting. Now, here's the great thing, too. It's not just about uh, I can take this uh, tax loss harvest. Uh, I can also do what's called wash trading. Well, wash trading is illegal in the traditional markets, but thankfully we're not in the traditional markets. We're in cryptocurrency. So I'm going to uh, back up and talk about what tax loss harvesting is with cryptocurrencies and how that relates uh, as far as uh, written in CryptoTrader.tax. Also, tax season is going to be coming up. If you link, look at the link in the uh, description below, there's going to be a link to CryptoTrader.tax, and there's a, a pretty hefty discount, which, trust me, uh, if you know you have to do taxes like I do, uh, this is going to save you a boatload of time. I used them last year, and they were a lifesaver. So anyhow, tax loss harvesting. Uh, cryptocurrencies are treated as property for tax purposes, exactly the same as stocks. This means that you can also strategically sell, trade crypto to harvest losses and reduce your tax liability. Let me read that again. You can strategically sell or trade crypto to harvest losses and reduce your tax liability. The great thing about CryptoTrader.tax, the program, is once you put all your information in, and they have an API integration, they'll tell you, like, look, since you bought XYZ on 2018, you can take this much and take it as a loss, and this is how much you'll save. It's awesome. So, yes, I'm definitely going to do that here. Uh, but wash sell rules. This is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, a wash sell results <laughs> when you incur a capital loss and then buy the same security back within a 30-day window before or after the capital loss is incurred. So if you do this, if you, if you sell and then buy it back in 30 days, you're like, you can't do that. However, the IRS specifically states that wash sale rules only apply to securities. I'll get back to that in a second. Securities. Cryptos are property right now, not securities as defined by IRS guidance. This means that wash sale rules do not apply to cryptocurrency at this time. So let's talk about the securities. So right now, that is what is at the uh, forefront of the actual lawsuit. Is XRP an actual security? So since there's no ruling right now, I am going to uh, definitely do this quickly, and I will probably not actually ask for an extension this year and just, you know, uh, file my taxes. Because if they come back, my worry is that, that this, as SEC comes back and says, yes, um, we run the ruling, uh, XRP, you are a security, and then everybody who bought, they own securities. So that would null and void me uh, at, at that point. So this is a, uh, uh, a tricky situation. They could retroactively go back. They might not. But uh, this is the game that we play because we are in this cryptocurrency, and it's a whole uh, new world. And uh, we'll see how it all works. But uh, I'm going to sell right now because I can incur massive losses. And then also I will probably buy back a little bit because... There's a, there's a tremendous upside. Will I buy back all of it? I'll decide that later. But uh, that is what is going on. That is why I'm doing it. Again, don't get too emotionally involved. It's just crypto, and uh, it's not life or death. So if you sell, you sell, and uh, you have to do what's best for your family, and that is it. So that is it for today's video. I want to say uh, thanks for watching it. Also, I just know that we're going to be doing the uh, alternatives to cash out, which will should pop up right there. 
and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, how to use crypto loans as, uh, as opposed to cashing out and taking uh, massive losses as far as like capital gains tax and rolling them into uh, four different criteria. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, investment properties uh, and using those as far as like Airbnb and VRBO. All right, so that is it for today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it and uh, I'll see you tonight.